Hi, welcome to Allergy Dragon. If you don't know who I am, my name is Martha. I'm an allergy chef and specialty diet chef. I kind of said that backwards, but especially diet and allergy chef. And I am actually coming to you to make an awesome you no know, bake cookie, you know, from our childhood, we got to take those, you know, these are the recipes that my mom did because my mom was not the best baker. This is quick and easy. So it's definitely homage to her because, you know, this is one of the things that she used to make me. Now I have to, you know, tweak it a bit so my kids would enjoy it. And then also I can enjoy it too. So this is actually part of Memorial Day weekend allergen recipe uh, conversion challenge. It was put on by Our Heritage Works. And so I'll be linking their channel down below. You need to check out David. He does a really great job. And even I've got a couple pointers. So that's gotta tell you something, right? Okay, so we're gonna get started on this recipe. I'm actually making double the amount. I'll have it linked below at allergydragon.com, my recipe for the original amount. Now I'm making about, like a normal recipe usually makes about 12 to 18 cookies that are like pretty big size, whoops, pretty big size cookies. And then if you wanna do super small, like a two ounce cookie, you're gonna get double that amount. So I actually happen to be making this, I'm filming this right on Friday, cause it's been kind of crazy. So it's May 27th right now, and we're getting ready to go to a Memorial Day picnic and I'm bringing these to the family reunion type of thing. So, you know, and we have a lot of allergy people in my family, so. Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have a medium soft pan. I went ahead and started and preheated it. So it can start to melt down a little bit, okay? And I'm going to start to turn this because I'm actually filming on Zoom on my laptop because you know how life is camera. So we're gonna pan down and it looks like we can actually kind of see everything. So normally I would have eight tablespoons of a palm shortening or that kind of thing. I actually have 16. You can like change over the cups and that kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. You want to use like a coconut shortening or a palm shortening, something that's actually going to kind of re-solidify itself after a while. You know, after it comes to room temperature, you don't want like a liquid fat like olive oil or something like that. Okay. So the biggest part of why people say that they mess up uh, no bake cookies is because they overboil their sugar and you really only need to do it about like one minute and doesn't have to be a full roar, roaring boil or anything like that you know so I have an electric stove top not my favorite thing that's for sure so I do have my recipe um, over here just so I don't forget to tell you all something so sorry about that I have it kind of going all over the place don't I I guess I'm gonna go back to my original place because it seems to be the best place for it <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, put in, the next thing we usually put in is I usually put in my milk and my cocoa powder. This is rice milk and normally it's a half a cup but I'm doing a full cup. You can use any milk that is safe for you, okay? So please keep that in mind. You wanna use whatever is safe for you. Um, so then we're gonna go ahead and put in our cocoa powder. And you can kind of do this part in any order, but I do like to get my cocoa powder in there. Kind of likes to stick. Now, if you're like me and have an allergy to chocolate, one, be very careful handling it. I should have had gloves on there. But chocolate, um, carob powder can be an alternative for chocolate, powdered chocolate, um, cocoa powder. So keep that in mind. And then I usually put my sugar in. And normally that is only two cups, but since we happen to be uh, doubling this recipe, because I've got to make sure I got plenty for the family, it is actually four cups of sugar. I left a little bit there. I should put the rest of it in there. And my sugar is vegan. A lot of people don't understand the difference between vegan sugar and that is just that it has to do with the bone char and how you filtrate it. So this has not been filtered with bone char. So it's a vegan safe recipe. So we also have a vanilla extract. We're not gonna put the vanilla extract in until the closer to the end when I put the other items in. I usually will swap out my spatula now. And I'll put that over there. And I'm going to grab a whisk because I like a whisk better. Kind of breaks up everything. And I can really mix it up. I didn't want to talk and mix at the same time for too long. Okay. 
So you're gonna stir this up and make sure that you get the chocolate mixed in really well. And I usually add my salt. It's a half a teaspoon of salt and a fourth a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And I have double that amount. So a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, which I'm getting all over my hand right this moment. And salt. Salt is very important for the chocolate. It really enhances the flavor. So definitely make your chocolate. And cream of tartar, what that cream of tartar does is it actually helps to solidify and harden your cookies and give them a little bit of a crunch to it. Kind of like what you would do with a meringue if you've ever had to make a, a meringue and you add the cream of tartar to that. And I might be able to actually speak at some point today. Now I'm not using peanut butter. I'm actually using sun nut butter, okay? And sun nut butter is made in a top nine allergen friendly place. Uh, they're not sponsored by the way. This is original. Um, so you could use any kind of nut butter that you can use. This is sunflower nut butter, literally. And it's safe for my family. Now you could use cashews, you could use almond. Just remember, you may have to play with your sugar depending on what kind of nut butter you have. Like if you use a sweetened one, it's a little bit sweeter. So you may have to adjust your sugar. And then we're just kind of making sure that the sugar completely dissolves. And that's what I'm kind of waiting on. Now, if you're using rice milk, that happens to be um, same room temperature. It's pretty cool. Now you're, uh, you know, pretty cool, ha ha ha. But it's room temperature, so it's going to come up to temp a little bit quicker. Mine was actually something that was in the refrigerator. Oh, we got a little few bubbles going on here. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to let this bubble for about or boil for about a minute. And then I'm going to actually add in our vanilla. We don't want to add our vanilla in too soon because then it evaporates completely. And I'll add in our sun nut butter, but not until I've turned the heat off. Usually take this off the heat, but since we have a limited um, space right now, this is what, how we're gonna work this out, okay? And then I always like to keep my oats in a separate bowl. And then I actually put my oats and and actually mix it all up. And that just because it'll actually uh, come together quicker. I prefer doing real-time videos. So this is why we're doing this one the way. So what are some of your favorite recipes from your childhood? Let me know down in the comments below. This is definitely one of my family's favorite. Okay, so that has pretty much boiled up a little bit and I don't feel any more granules of sugar. Okay, so I'm going to reach over and turn the heat off. I think everybody can really see that there's no granules. I always get up on the sides and you can see how the granules are if you can really hear it crunching. Now, this is usually one cup, but since I am doubling the recipe, I am using a whole jar, so, which is two cups, so. Get this all out of here and put it in there. Okay, I got most of it out of there. And then I'm just gonna mix this around until it's well incorporated. Like I said, normally I take this off of the heat. It is um, turned off, but it's an electrical one. So it's not as good as gas, which immediately turns your heat off. Anybody else out there like me likes to prefer gas, you know? Unfortunately, where I live at, I can't do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the vanilla in now. And I'm really just looking for the peanut butter. Well, it's not peanut butter, it's sun nut butter. <laughs> sun nut butter or whatever nut butter you're using to really kind of solidify, not really solidify, actually melt into the chocolate. So then you have like a kind of sauce, which is delicious, which honestly you could use that as a, a really nice sauce. Uh, for like, you know, a Sunday, like make a hot fudge. It's an easy hot fudge sheet. Just don't put the cream of tartar in there where it stiffens up too much on you, but it does, it's, it's really good. Okay, so we've got this predominantly together. 
I usually wait for it to just get a little bit more together. I hope everybody can see how incredibly rich and this smells so incredibly good. So it's pretty much amazing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just love the smell of chocolate, even though I can't eat it. I really like it. And so far, not too bad, even if it gets a little bit on me. Okay. So I'm going to switch out my bowl and I'm going to put it here. And luckily it's a glass bowl. And then we're going to pour our chocolate in here. Okay. Woo! And now this is when I'm going to get my spatula because I don't want to, uh, waste any of the ooey gooeyness. We want all the ooey gooeyness in here. Sorry, I don't think you can really see the bubbles that much, but that's about it. And once you make this a couple times, it's super quick and easy. I think it's pretty quick and easy now. Let me put this over. Oh, I had some chocolate left on my on my spatula, whoops, that didn't get mixed in really well. But it's okay. The good things about these, as long as you let your sugar boil down for about one minute and don't try to overboil, you're gonna be fine, okay? So you mix this up together, your oats and that kind of thing. Now I actually leave my oats and mix this for about, uh, for a couple minutes and then I let it soak in there for about 10 minutes, then I mix it up one more time. And then I actually scoop generally. Okay, that's just how I like to do it. I find that it really helps absorb a lot of the liquid and you can kind of go, oh, wait a minute, I didn't get that mixed up well enough. See, it can, it can, they can hide on you. So you really gotta get down there. And of course this is a little bit more. So my, my bowl is a little bit messy. And it takes a little bit longer because I am, you know, double the amounts, but I'm serious. It's still a pretty quick and easy recipe in my opinion, even if you double it. But what I love about this is most people have these items actually in their, you know, in your actual cupboard and that kind of thing. So once we have this all together and mixed up really good and you let it sit for about 10 minutes, we're gonna actually scoop here in a minute. And I'm gonna actually change the setting. So hello, my arm. Hello. Didn't go anywhere. You saw my greeny coat in there. Well, now you see my face. Woo. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> so I have a little bit of chocolate on me. Like I said, I'm not contact with chocolate, like that it's going to make me too sick. So we are good. Now oats. Oats are a controversial thing. So what I'm going to say with oats, they have to be grown in America purity protocol oats, they have to be grown not around wheat, rye, or barley. And even at that, some people that have celiac disease have trouble just digesting oat flour. And like, for instance, there's a popular cookie brand. I don't want to get flagged for it, but they have like sandwich things. And everybody was super excited when they came out and they happen to have oat in them and oat flour. And so some people were getting sick of it and I'm like, just sick from it. And so I was like, make sure if you have an oat sensitivity that you can't you know, eat it and um, to, to avoid those things. So that's basically what I was trying to say. Me personally, I only eat oats about once a month, if that. Um, so not everybody can tolerate them. And I try to make it where, you know, I'm not going to judge you on it. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, you definitely can't. Everybody's a little bit different. Okay. So that's my stance on the oats and why I'm using them. If you're going to use uh, hemp seeds in this particular recipe, you want to cut down your fat because hemp has fat in it and it'll seep out from the heat. So if you could use like buckwheat flakes or other grains that you like, flax seed, chia seeds, different you know, types of things like that, they work really well as well. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and scoop these really quickly. So I have a two ounce scooper, okay? And this is really, really hard, hard. You're just gonna scoop it like this. See, it's just an even scoop. And then I have a parchment tray over here which I'm going to drop everything but 
we're going to actually put this on here so that you can see me scoop. Whoops. And there we go. Well, not the perfect scoop. Let me see here. <laughs> Let me take this out of my hand. But I think we get a pretty good shot of it. Here we go. There we go. We got a good shot finally. Okay, so I'm going to scoop all of these out and then I'm going to let them sit for about 30 minutes minimum before you can really move them. You can kind of rush them by putting them in the refrigerator if you want to, but I prefer to actually you know, let mine cool for a couple hours and set up um, on the counter. So, you know, it's going to be mindful of the people that might pick some and that kind of thing and grab them. <laughs> so be mindful of that. Okay, well, if Oh, okay. <clears throat> sorry guys, I can't talk tonight. Maybe not the best time to shoot a video, huh? Um, <laughs> and especially with my editing software to be kind of down. But anyway, I think this turned out pretty good. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. And let me know if there's anything I can improve, improve or anything else you would like to know about. So I'm really glad that you got to uh, check out this video. Remember all our links will be down below. Check out on my, uh, our Heritage Works for their recipes and allergy friendly items as well. And uh, you can check me out for some of my live classes and that, that kind of thing. Subscribe, like this video, you know, all the good stuff, ring the bell. And I will see you again. And I hope this recipe helps you tame your allergy dragon. Bye.